In this Photoshop demo, we're going to take a look at how you can put a plane on it. Hi out there, uh, my name is Joe Petralia with Evervisions. Have you ever seen those photos where someone has a, caught a plane silhouette way up in the sky and maybe it's within a downtown area and you can see some converging uh, buildings and it's a, it's a nice cityscape image and a really small area where they caught that airplane and you wonder how did they get that? How did they, how, how did they know a plane was going to travel at that exact time and have it perfectly centered? Um, how did they get all their camera settings right? And, uh, or did they just wait around uh, for 10-15 minutes for that plane to appear? Well, sometimes perhaps yes, but other times you'd be surprised to see that they probably photoshopped that in. So they took a, a plane from one image and they, they brought it into another image and they went to town and put it in, putting it in the right place where they wanted and uh, putting the special effects on there that they're happy with. So in this demo, we're going to take a look at how we can do just that. All right, here we are in uh, Lightroom and I have my two photos ready to go that we're going to be working with. Uh, one is of a building in New Orleans, downtown New Orleans, shot with a 5D Mark II Canon with a 50 millimeter 1.4 lens. And the other was also with the Canon 5D Mark II shot with a 17 to 40 millimeter lens in Ocean Beach, San Diego, California, which is right by the airport. And that makes getting shots like this um, pretty easy because there's a ton of planes that you can try and get instead of having to um, be at, I don't know, a less busy airport or a place where uh, you can't really get in a good position to get a shot like this. So um, that's where we're at. First thing I want to do is select both, go into the develop module and enable the profile corrections in the lens corrections tab here. And that's going to remove some of the barrel distortion and the lens vignetting caused by um, most lenses. So uh, pretty nifty little thing to start with right there. Go back to your library module by hitting G and right click and hit edit in and open as layers in Photoshop. And that's going to spin up. All right, first I want to drag the airplane layer above the building layer, zoom in a little bit, hit M for my marquee tool, select the airplane, but I actually want the outer portions of this selection. So I need to select my inverse and I'm going to delete that stuff and hit Command D to deselect. Uh, the next thing I want to do is, is go in even further and use my magic wand tool I can hit W or go out and select it on the toolbar on the left there and select the sky. And you can kind of see it's kind of selecting a little bit too much of the airplane, although it's doing a pretty good job. I could mess with the tolerance, but a better way to kind of get the selection you want is to use this refine edge dialog. And I'm going to use the uh, refine radius tool and I'm just going to paint along the edge of my airplane here. And it's going to do a pretty good job of um, selecting the little pieces of the, the plane and all that. And um, I could output this as a selection and then apply a layer mask, but it's going to save me a click if I just apply as a layer mask right here. And if I hit OK, we'll see that it, it's the, the inverse layer mask. It's, 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 it's doing the opposite of what we want. So to fix that, I can select my layer mask and hit Command I. And now we're in good shape. So now we can zoom out. I'm just holding command and minus to do that. Uh, let's hit V for our move tool and let's move our airplane into position, maybe like dead center in that center column right there. And maybe let's uh, hit command T to kind of put that on a little bit of an angle like that. All right. Next thing I want to do is duplicate my building layer and I can do that by dragging uh, on the new layer icon or if I undo that, hit Command J, I can make a duplicate like that, like right, right there like that. Okay, let's hit Command T to transform. Right click inside and hit flip vertical. Maybe it didn't go. There we go. Let's hit Enter to commit that transformation. And let's drop the opacity of this layer a little bit so I can see where I'm moving it. And I just want to kind of move it... Uh, into position right about right about let's say right about there 
and we can bring our opacity back up and we can uh, move our um, let's we'll move our plane uh, fine-tune our plane position in just a second how do we get rid of the sky that's overlapping our other building we can do that with the layer mask let's grab our brush tool um, let's bring in our flow up on our brush maybe about 50 percent and uh, let's make it a little bit um, harder and make sure black is in our foreground and we can just paint away the sky that is overlapping that building just like that um, now we can use the crop tool and I need to reset my crop here so let's go ratio let's hit clear uh, let's hit escape let's hit C again um, sorry let's hit uh, yeah there we go and let's just drag so we can reveal the rest of that building and let's hit enter to commit that um, but let's say we want to like make this a little bit more stylistic and maybe it's going to go on Instagram so uh, we can hit the, the, the um, uh, let's hit escape or sorry let's hit V and let's hit C again to bring up the, the crop tool and uh, if we go to one by one square it's going to keep it a nice square proportion uh, for Instagram and we can just sort of um, you know drag and find a, a nice composition that we're, we're happy with I think you know that looks pretty good right there and we can see we need to if we want our plane dead center we need to move it in uh, just a little bit so we'll do that in a second let's hit enter and let's hit V for the move tool let's grab our plane and let's kind of just let's zoom in a little bit here kind of put it in the right spot with our arrow keys that looks pretty good all right next I want to uh, bring the uh, we can see we've got a little uh, little piece of the crop there so we can we can just crop it in a little bit a little bit more just like that all right I want to bring the blues uh, up in the sky and uh, also the blues on the reflection of the windows so to do that I can do a hue saturation layer and I can change this from master down to blues to, and it'll target only the blues and I can just drag my saturation up maybe like to about 75 or so 70 something like that that looks pretty good um, okay um, the next thing I want to do is, is add some, uh, well, let's make a stamp visible layer. So hit command option shift and E that's going to make a stamp visible layer. And the next thing I want to do is create some vignetting, um, maybe like on the columns of this building here and then the, the, the top building here, and then maybe enhance the highlights, uh, which are also kind of appearing like a, like a white vignetting. Um, but I don't want it to affect my sky and we'll, we'll take care of that. So let's start with um, doing the, the black vignetting and to do that I'm going to make a new layer and I'm going to hit uh, shift F5 to bring up my fill dialog and fill it with 50% gray and then I want to change this to overlay and this is a technique you could use for dodging and burning as well. Now let's make sure we have black in our foreground so I can hit X to do that because it was at white. Just hit an X there. Let's grab G for a gradient tool. So we have a, a black to uh, transparent black gradient and the opacity kind of low, which is good. I like that. And let's just kind of start painting in some, some gradation here. And you can see it's uh, sort of adding like a vignetting effect. Let's do the same thing up here. That looks pretty good, but it's affecting our sky. So we need to mask out the sky. And to do that, we need to make a selection. And to do that, we need to uh, come down to our, our stand visible layer here. Let's grab our quick selection tool and we can just paint in the sky and that's gonna do a really good job of selecting the sky and not selecting the building because um, in this particular example, we have a nice hard edge on these buildings. So that's why the quick selection tool is, is, a, is a fine tool for this purpose. Uh, you could use a brush and with a hard edge and some other methods, but this one is, is the best way for this particular composition. So let's roll with it. Um, let's go back to our layer two, hit the mask, and it's going to load that selection into a mask, but it's the opposite of what we want. So just hit command I, and then it's going to uh, white reveal and black conceal. And in this case, we want to conceal the this layer where the sky was, and it's doing a good job of that. And 
Um, you know, if we think that's too drastic of a vignetting effect, we can lower that opacity on that a little bit just like that. Let's do the same thing with the white. Let's create a new layer. Shift F5 to bring up this fill dialog. 50% gray. Change it to overlay. And this time we're going to use a white brush, a big soft white brush. And I'm using a, a Wacom tablet, so I'm holding Alt or Option and Control, and I'm dragging up and down to increase and decrease the hardness of my brush. If I want to do the size, I can do left to right holding Alt to Option and Control as well. So let's do a kind of like a big one, uh, soft. Let's turn our flow down to like 10% or so. We can hit Shift 1 to do that. Let's make sure white is in the foreground. And let's just paint like right here. We can just kind of build that up with that flow that we chose. And maybe that's just a, a hair overdone. So let's lower the opacity a little bit. And let's create a mask because we don't want it to be on the, affecting the sky. So we do that right there. And we already made a great selection and mask with this layer. So we can just hold, we can select this mask again, hold Alt and drag it to that mask. And we have the same mask and same selection on this layer now too. Uh, so that's really all there is to it. Uh, you could add a layer of sharpening if you wanted to. Uh, one of the sharpening techniques I'll use is um, uh, creating a uh, uh, another stamp visible layer, and I'll desaturate that. Command Shift U, and then I'll go up to Filter, Other, High Pass. Um, choose a low pixel amount, like 1.2. You can see like there are other sharpening methods where we'll reduce some of this uh, white sort of fringing or, or, or ghosting. Um, but you know, for this purpose, it's going to go on Instagram it might be kind of hard to tell. Um, and this is just one sharpening method. So I'll show you some other ones in some other tutorials, but let's change this to overlay. And then you can uh, zoom in a little bit. And if you want to selective sharpen, you can, you can mask. So, so we're revealing all, but if you like, let's say you for whatever reason you didn't want to sharpen the buildings, you could just uh, grab a brush and jack this flow up to 100% or whatever and maybe make this a little bit harder of a brush and paint black and it won't affect the buildings in this case because we're hiding this sharpening effect where we're painting black. Um, but, you know, that's up to you. Um, this example, I think uh, a little bit of sharpening all, all the way around is, is fine. You can kind of see if I toggle, it might be hard to see on the video, but if I toggle this on and off, it's creating just a little bit of sharpening, which will kind of help that make this image pop a little bit on uh, Instagram. And I think Instagram now even has some sharpening filters inside of it itself. So you might be able to make this image look a little bit better for Instagram's purposes once you bring it into Instagram. But I basically just wanted to show you how to um, make this kind of scenario in Photoshop, you know, we're making our own sort of world here and uh, we didn't have to stand down at the bottom and wait for the plane to be in the right place at the right time and get all, all of our camera settings correct and that kind of thing. I know this is just a, a duplicate building. We're just kind of creating like a special effect image here, but you know, you could, if you had some other buildings you wanted to put in and get the perspective right and all that, you could do that too. But the bottom line is you could take this airplane and bring it into another photo and kind of pull off some of those um, stylistic airplane in the sky photos that you see out there. So um, there you have it. Okay guys, thanks for checking out the video. Uh, please stay tuned to evervisions.com or please subscribe to the YouTube channel to see some new videos that I'll be updating uh, throughout each week. And I know there's a lot of places that you can get uh, Photoshop photography and Lightroom information. So again, thanks for checking me out and uh, stay tuned. Also, check out the evervisions.com website to see my uh, three-part Seascape tutorial where I'll first show you how to use Lightroom only with one exposure to add some punch and pop to a Seascape image. Next, we'll take three bracketed images, bring them into Photomatix, juice them up a little bit, and then bring them back into Lightroom for some further juice. And then in the third part, we'll use Photoshop and a luminosity masking technique to really make that one shine and pop and uh, look a little bit more professional. Uh, talk to you later. Thanks again.